My name is Ian Walsh, and this is Masters of the Market, uh, as we like to bring you guys the biggest players in our industry, in the real estate world that, that we know of. So today we are joined with somebody who is very unique to this space, and as he likes to say, and he said it earlier in the prior interviews that you probably have seen, he is in a niche market that is a, uh, a very large dollar sign behind most of his transactions. I'm joined today with uh, Ken, Will Ken Weller from Rittenhouse Realty and Rittenhouse Capital Advisors. Ken, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks um, for having me. I'd like to give some acknowledgement to your, uh, to your co-partner, Corey Lomberger. He's, uh, he's not with us today, but he is just as much of an integral part of your workings, as, from what I understand, as, as you are. So you guys, um, run such an unbelievably large operation in this city. Everybody knows the multifamily commercial projects that you move along with the debt equity that you guys provide for a lot of these projects alone. So I wanna dive into Ken Weller and understand how did you get into this world? Because it is, I don't wanna say it's a closed off world, but anybody I know that's in it, they know each other and nobody I ever know all of a sudden goes from your average person on the street to doing what you do. So how did you get into it? How did you get into real estate? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, to your point, commercial real estate and and residential real estate is, is really oranges and apples. They're completely different segments. And you really, I could, I wouldn't want to ever get involved in a residential deal. It's, it's not what I do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not emotional sales. It's purely investments. Yep. And so there, it's really two different worlds. I actually got into real estate when I was uh, about 20 years old, when I was in college. Okay. Uh, studied abroad for a summer. I, I always knew I wanted to do something that I loved. And I uh, read a few different books, actually. My first real estate book I read was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it was a great book. It was uh, very inspirational. And when I got back that summer, uh, when I was studying abroad, I bought my first row home in Upper Darby, actually a $30,000 house. Uh, I grew up not too far from there in Delaware County in a little town called Yaden. So I, I uh, you know, it was a little rougher neighborhood, but there was, there was opportunity I saw. So I, I bought this house for 30 grand. I invested maybe 20 into it and I sold it for like 80 in, in a matter of less than a year. And I did that over and over again. And I started renting out these homes. I graduated from college and I was pretty much, you know, doing residential development on my own. And uh, I wanted to get into commercial real estate, but I didn't really know how. Uh, I got a job out of college. I was uh, working for um, an insurance company selling mutual funds and life insurance and health insurance. Uh, wasn't really for me, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about sales. It was a really good experience. I did that for a year. But I was making more money in kind of my residential development than my day-to-day -day job. So I thought to myself, what's the best way? I knew residential, it was, it was fun, but that market was starting to turn. This was um, back before the housing market uh, busted back in 2005. So, but I saw things turning, and I, I knew I wanted to get into bigger things. So, I started interviewing with a lot of the national commercial real estate companies, and I was able to land a spot with a, a, uh, a national company that was new to Philadelphia, where I didn't need to start under anybody else, and I was able to kind of go out there. They had a great trading program. I was able to kind of learn the business and you know, start selling multifamily properties. That was kind of my niche. I was, always was doing multifamily sales. And I was able to kind of learn the business through their platform and just go out there and hustle and work really hard. Uh, I was there for about nine years. And uh, one of my biggest competitors, Corey Lomberger, he was, we were kind of button heads on different deals. We always com always compete on deals. And uh, I thought, you know, why don't we both combine our, mm -hmm. our skill sets and work together? So we ended up working at the national firm together for about a, about a year and a half. And then we decided to, we had the opportunity to kind of go out, start our own platform. We, we met um, a great family that uh, kind of was behind us and, and supported us. And we started Rittenhouse uh, Realty Advisors about four years ago. Uh, and it's been a great success. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've done close to almost $600 million in investment sales, primarily focusing on uh, multifamily properties. We do a lot of middle market properties. So okay. say the average deal size is probably eight to $9 million. Uh, you know, we'll do a couple 
40, 50 million dollar deals a year. And, you know, they will throw a ton of like two to ten million dollar deals. That's your bread and butter. Yeah, I would say two, two to fifteen million dollars is, is really our bread and butter. Um, so we, we saw an opportunity kind of in the marketplace where, you know, Corey had his um, experience with his national firm. I had my experience. We kind of wanted to use the best practices from each company and and what we learned over the years and, and, and start our own, own company, just really focusing on multifamily, <coughs> excuse me, multifamily sales in this region. And, um, you know, we, we, had, we started with another partner, Mark Duzak, who's also with a, a national company. And we, we created a great team, which started out as four guys. Now we have a team of about 20 people. Uh, we all work in, in different areas in which we focus. I do a, a lot of business in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I'm always out promoting um, the city. I love Philadelphia. It's one of the greatest cities in this country. Um, so I'm always at different conferences promoting Philadelphia. I'm meeting different investors throughout the United States and, and telling them why they should invest in, in Philadelphia. Uh, we have an office in New York City too, so I'm, I'm up in New York at least once a week. I'm promoting different different deals that we have. And people see, see what's going on here in Philadelphia. I think it's an exciting time to be a part of all the development in Philadelphia. I mean, there's cranes everywhere. It's, you know, from smaller, 10 unit projects to big residential communities being built to, you know, the high rise towers, Comcast Innovation Center. I mean, it's, it's just- It's exploding it's, right yeah, now, it's, absolutely. It's exciting, it's a, it's a very exciting time to be a part of the real estate community right now. Well, that segues right into my next question, which is why a lot of people will want to see this. A guy like you that gets to experience um, real estate from really a different point of view than most, which is large commercial. It's just not a world we all get to see. Um, where are we going? Where do you see the market trending right now in terms of, let's let's go with the large commercial stuff. Where is it gonna be in the next five years? I'm not gonna hold you to it, um, but where do you see? Like, what are some things you're seeing that maybe is a shifting market, a changing market? You mentioned the cranes and so forth. We're in Philadelphia, a booming market. Um, give some insight into that. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think as long as we keep having jobs coming in the city, we get more and more jobs. I think Comcast is one of the big drivers of of bringing more jobs in the city, but a lot of companies that support Comcast are also coming to the city. We're seeing a lot more startup companies um, popping up all throughout the city as well. I think the, the drive and the population growth is gonna to continue to, to happen. Uh, there is actually a lot of studies that said there's not actually enough multifamily housing and that we need more. So I think uh, as long as we still keep get jobs coming in the city, uh, the population keeps uh, continue to go up. I mean, I think the multifamily space should be should be fine. I mean, I believe right now, if you look at Class A apartment buildings, you know, there's a lot of units that were delivered all at once. So, you know, there has been a in, in some different situations in some buildings, some concessions. But overall, the, I mean, the market is pretty healthy, and you know, the invest the investors. I mean, we we get calls nonstop. So I, I don't think there's a shortage of people that want to be here in Philadelphia and want to the invest. Demand, yeah. The demand is huge. So uh, I continue that to be very strong. So you bring up a really good point, which I think, and I always believe in this, when there's a boom in, a, in an area, um, I always try to figure out why. The question is why, because if you have a boom that you can't answer the question of why the boom is happening, you would then have a bubble. But what you're saying, which, which is very interesting, is you have infrastructure from large um, companies such as Comcast coming in to support the growth. Right, mm -hmm. so, so if you're appreciating, you have to be able to support that somehow. Whether if you take like a city like Pittsburgh, right, they had an injection of natural resource, like like their, like their natural gas came in and said, well, the city's booming, real estate's going up, but you can't, it can't float on hot air. Well, I guess in Pittsburgh it is hot air, but mm -hmm. it can't float on that, on nothing. So you need to be able to support the boom, which is what you're saying, you're seeing in Philadelphia, you're seeing the demand from the infrastructure of companies, new companies coming in right now and saying, we need more. And then you have investors on the outside saying, we want to buy more. Correct. I mean, it's, what's funny about Philly is there was such a, a flight of people leaving back in the 70s and mm -hmm. 80s. So the infrastructure was already, the city was built great. I mean, there were so many uh, buildings around here that were vacant and, and left in shambles back in the 80s. And now what you're seeing is investors and, and private money coming in and fixing up these buildings, putting capital back into them. 
and readapting the buildings into better uses and making buildings to the highest best use. So you're seeing all these buildings that have been here, you know, since the 1920s, 30s, 50s. I mean, they just sat vacant for so long. Now they're just being rehabbed, and, and you're seeing that all as long, along with all the new construction going on in the city. So. The infrastructure was always here, and now you're seeing all the population really come back into the city, and we're seeing that population growth in Philadelphia. So that's it's. it's Could we exciting. call the whole city a value add? The city is becoming its own value add. Can we go that far with it in your world? Now too cheesy. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so Ken, any parting words for everybody that's watching this for for what you do? I, I I have great respect for your company and what you guys have developed. So any information you can give to anybody watching this, I'm sure they're going to benefit from. Yeah, look, if you're, if you're looking for any opinion of values on any commercial properties that we can help you with, uh, we, we also do debt and equity. We just closed on a 360,000 square foot Class A office building, so we do work on all uh, product types, and that was a uh, you know, $56 million loan we helped uh, produce uh, last week. So I mean, we're doing, uh, on, on, the, on the debt and equity, we're doing you know, office, industrial, retail, multifamily. But we can help you on the debt and equity side as well as on the investment sales side or if you just want an opinion of value to have us look at a property give you a value evaluation of what we think it's worth uh, we'd be happy to do that as well always uh, always giving always fun to be with guys ken weller as you guys know i'm ian walsh uh ian at hardmoneybankers.com ken easiest way to contact you uh just info at rittenhouserealty.com info at rittenhouserealty.com thanks guys thank you